this is my mother. Her name was Savannah Redding. And this is my father, Otis Redding Sr. I'm the oldest of six children. I was born in Dawson, Georgia, which is a farming community. And at the age of five, we moved to Macon, Georgia, which is a community of about, at that time, 50,000 people. I went to a Catholic school, St. Peter Claver, and later to B.S. Ingram, where all of us went. Uh, while the teacher was teaching reading, I had already learned to read at the Catholic school, so I would go up and get books that she had in her uh, little satchel, and I would read throughout the class day, really, while she was teaching reading. And reading was something that I just loved to do. I am the oldest. I'm two years older than my sister, Christine, and three years older than Darlene, my other sister, and five years older than my brother, Otis, and eight years older than my brother Rogers. And when I was graduating from high school, we got a, a surprise, Deborah. She was born when I was graduating. There were six children. My father worked many jobs, and there were times when I would have to meet him after he had left the first job and take him lunch so he could go to the second job. He was a very, very proud man. He was a very diligent man, and he also loved his family. My mother was a homemaker most of the time. She only worked when times were hard. And we did have the best of times, and we had the worst of times. My father decided that the most important thing in life was an education. And I'm sure it was because he was denied an education. And the next thing was for us to grow up with dignity, with an education, to be able to love and have respect for all people. So we had to go to church, Sunday school. Those two were the foundation of our lives. If you didn't go to church, then you didn't have other activities at school. Everybody had to sing in church, but it was learned very quickly that I was not a singer, but I had to sing anyway. <laughs> we lived in a new housing project, but we were able to have four bedrooms, enough bedrooms for all of the kids. So for us, it was heaven. And we go through an area that had a park. It was Tatna Square Park. We go through the park and we'd meet, since this was at a time of segregation, we'd meet um, a young lady who was Caucasian. We'd meet at the same place where the bird bath was. And she'd ask each of us to dis display our, a talent. So mine was poetry. My sisters had Bible verses and Otis would sing. And she'd give each of us a coin to put, in, put a place in Sunday school. And of course, because Otis could sing and she was so happy about that, he got, he got the biggest amount of money, which was a 50 cent piece. <laughs> so, that was our track each Sunday. I was the first one to graduate high school. Um, and I was the first one to graduate college. And because of my father's dream, um, my, my sister next to me, Christine, also is college graduate and became a teacher. And uh, my sister Deborah graduated Mercer University, where my father used to work after work. And um, 
she was the first one, she was in the first class that integrated Mercer University in uh, Macon, Georgia. My father's uh, interest was always education because he had been de denied an education. In fact, he was such a good parent, he was always volunte volunteering. And on the weekends, my father would sell Avon, he and my mo mother. And I noticed that he had 49 cents from the top of one page, eight and a half by 11, to the bottom. And I asked him at that time to learn his multiplication facts, which was in a composition book. And he did so very quickly. And I showed him how he could multiply 10 times that 49 cents. And he was amazed. And he, at that time, decided, you're a teacher. You have to be a teacher. I have a BA in English. and. My graduate degree, uh, a master's in library science, uh, information science. So that was his focus on education and his dream for all of the children. And all of his children did graduate except one. And that's because it seems that my brother came with one motive uh, and that was to be an entertainer. And it seems that he started at a, a very early age. I think that Otis must have been like a child prodigy because he came with a personality and, uh, and a fun-loving attitude. Uh, in fact, our house was a very quiet one before his entry. And the minute he came, I mean, I don't remember his ever actually crawling like most babies. He was running most of the time and talking and singing. And actually, uh, my father at that time knew that he had a wonderful voice, a beautiful voice. And he used to take uh, my younger brother and Otis to different churches at that time. He was trying to steer him in a different direction. Uh, my father never uh, got to read Gibran, perhaps, and to find that your children come through you, but they are not you, and you cannot give them your dreams or your thoughts. It seems that Otis came with his, with the program, and that was singing, jingles. He never sat down to learn a song. It just seems to me he heard it, and then he could sing it. Or reading, we don't know. Everybody else had to sit and learn phonics, and he just read. And in fact, uh, during the time when I went to school, teachers didn't have substitutes, so when they needed uh, to take care of little emergencies, they'd get a student in the class to take over till they could come back. And I was in, I think, sixth or seventh grade, um, and Otis was like second or third, and I had his class. And one little a student was reading, and he was reading in a staccato fashion. And Otis decided, let me show you how to read. So he just read it fluently, and then he turned the book upside down and read the same thing, because that was his way of doing things. And he said, now that's the way you read. But we don't know when he learned to read. <laughs> he did everything so fast. I don't know when he learned to write all the different songs because he was always so busy that, you know, we thought people and people wrote songs or poetry, they sat down and they thought about it. But what he say is, oh, I have a little song, could I have a rhyme? And he'd be on his way out and three of us, the sisters would add things 
And he'd say, not to Miss Proper. <laughs> because he knew I would be telling him to say it correctly. So he just wanted a rhyme. But we never, I never saw him sit down to write. But he wrote a lot of songs. Sitting on the dock of the day, watching the tide. He would make up little jingles about each one in the family. Some were good, some were bad. And he also, he was busy, always. He noticed everybody in the family, and I kept a diary, much to my regret, <laughs> because he found my diary and started reading aloud. And he locked himself in the bathroom and kept reading. And my mother was laughing and I was crying. And uh, from that day on, I never kept a diary. He also made a jingle about my diary. And they discovered my first love, his name. <laughs> and he was, he was the one in the family to bring in all the noise, all everything that was exciting. Well, my husband decided that he wanted to move from Florida to California. So we drove from Daytona Beach, Florida to Los Angeles. It was quite interesting. The minute we got to Los Angeles, we had stopped at a service station. The husband said to me, isn't that your brother? I said, yes, because I don't know anybody else whose name Otis Reddy, but my father and my brother. And that was Otis on the radio. They were playing his record, These Arms of Mine. That is a favorite of mine. That was his first song. The Arms of mine, they are lonely. I was a teacher and um, I was not able to drive the freeway at that time because I didn't know the city. And I decided to go to the Hall of Records and we took exams that took me to the Los Angeles County Library. And I was an, assist, uh, an assistant to a librarian who suggested that I go to library school. And I did. And luckily, uh, uh, Los Angeles Public Library had uh, a program uh, called uh, Librarian Training. And I was, I, I, I was fortunate enough to get into that program. So I went to library school and worked in science and tech and patents and copyright in Central Library downtown. This is celebrating the 50th anniversary of rock. And while I was working actually at the Vermont Square Library, this magazine came in and I was surprised to see that Otis was considered one of the 50 greatest artists of all time. And I regret most of all that my father was not able to see this. We never knew that he'd be this famous. Oh, I'm Uh, my sister Deborah and we were visiting um, in December of I think, 2015 and we found this kiosk on the way to the Otis Redding Ranch. You push the button and you can hear any song you like. Well, sing this song, y'all. Oh. Oh. Sing it for my baby. Uh, Otis's album, Live in Europe, I remember, I think we all have a, an ounce or two of shyness in the family. And this is the only time I've ever known him to be somewhat shy. 
uh, he told me about his arrival there and he said the Rolling Stones and many of these artists I was not aware of at this time at that time he said they met him in a limousine and he said there were many many people and he said I can't believe it they love me here he said I've never been treated this way at home and he talked and talked because no matter where he went, he always gave me a call to let me know how he was doing. And this was a fantastic occasion. And he was in awe of what was happening there. This happens to be my favorite album. Them young girls, they do get weary Wearing that same old shaggy dress after having uh, finished library school, I ended up at uh, the Vernon Branch Library as a children's librarian. It was there that I found that being a librarian could be very exciting. I was a children's librarian that involved storytelling. I have some pictures, well, of one occasion that we had at the Vernon Branch Library. And we found that that was a very exciting place to be. 